पे रहो हमारी कंश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑलमाइटी और बलविद कंश्याम महाराज पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन और पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य संतो पूज्य भगत जी आसिद बे एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोरीज जय स्वामी नारायण You know, for the past couple lectures, we've been listening to Maharaj's charitras, his santos charitras, his bhaktos charitras, and moreover, some are probably speculating what is the reason for that. But the best way to understand Bhagwan, the best way to receive his happiness, is to recite his charitras. Why? Because just how If there was a small boy, and he was sick, you wouldn't be able to give him direct medicine to cure his illness because, number one, he would probably spit it out; he wouldn't be able to take it. And number two, he doesn't have the knowledge that it's good for me; it's a cure for me. But what do charitras do? Well, think of ourselves as ill. Not physically, but we are bound in this Maya. We don't know what's exactly right and what exactly is wrong, and due to that, we are in this world bound by this world. So we are sick. But charitras are kind of like making a chocolate cake and putting that cough syrup or that syrup to. Cure you inside of it. Now, if you eat the chocolate cake, yeah, it'll taste like chocolate. It'll taste good, and you won't be able to taste the medicine. At the same time, you'd also get better, meaning you'd become unbounded by this world. You'd develop more affection for Bhagwan. All these various miracles will start occurring, but that is only hidden. In listening, charitras of Maharaj, because Maharaj gives simple messages. Yet, the deepest principles are hidden when within those simple messages. So again, we'd like to read today various charitras of Maharaj and understand Bhagwan's principles, views, beliefs, and move on in our life. This charitra is called quality over quantity. One time in Sabha, Shri Maharaj was at, Shri Maharaj asked his saints, "How many rosaries do you spin?" Meaning, how many maras do you spin? Some replied, "Five hundred maras." Another, another replied, "One thousand maras." Then Shri Maharaj inquired, "How do you spin these maras?" The saints then replied, "That we keep a berko." Meaning, it's a counting device. It's a it's a smaller version of a mada. It only has ten beads, a little bigger in size, and it was it's used to kind of keep count. Now, in those days, not just like modern days, santos had more time. Santos did not have to do activities or various hold various kinds of festivals like this. Or even do anything but worship Bhagwan and go on satsang vichran. Due to that, they received much ample time to perform devotion of Bhagwan. And as you can see, one saint said, "I'll be able to do five hundred maras." Another saint said, "I'll be able to do one thousand maras." So, after Maharaj asked that, "How do you do it?" So they said that. We just spin the mada, but we use a counting device so we won't lose count. And then, when our thousand is done, we would go to sleep. So then, in that sabha, many many small santos were sitting there. Many many prominent santos were sitting there. Elite santos, the topmost santos. Out of them, Maharaj asked 
Sadhguru Muktanand Swami. How many maras do you spend, Swami? Swami replied, I spend 50 maras. Everyone in the crowd who was spending 500 maras, 700, 1000 maras, they looked around and they were like, can you believe this? We call him our mother. We call him our senior saint. We call him such a saint that represents Maharaj and all the other Paramahansas. Yet, he only spins 50 Maharas? I mean, shame on him. This shouldn't, this should not be right. He should not be called prominent if he only spins 50 Maharas. These were the kinds of thoughts these Santos uh, developed. So, Maharaj then asked, obviously knowing that these Santos had these thoughts, that Muktanan Swami, sure, you spend 50 maras, but how do you spend them? That's what I would like to know. So Swami replied, I spend each bead by remembering your divine form and your body parts, Tilchin. And if, while I'm spinning the mara, if I'm halfway through and I forget your divine form, even for a second, then I reset that mara and start from the beginning again. And again I do it. So each mara, each bead is remembered by the divine form or Muktan Swami remembers the divine form of Maharaj. And after each one is done, 50 of these have to be done. So Muktan Swami says, I only do 50 maras. Maharaj said, the thousand and five hundred maras are nothing compared to Swami's one mara. You're probably wondering how. Usually in this, you can say, uh, world, we look at more of quantity, meaning how much instead of quality. Now if I can give you an example, suppose on a piece of, not a piece of paper, let's say a check. On a blank check, there is zeros written, but there is no one. Would that have any value? No, obviously not. Even if you took it to the greatest bank and there was at least 50 zeros behind it, how many ever you can fit on the check and you give it, they still wouldn't give you anything back. Sure, they would take the paper and they would deposit it in transit, but they wouldn't, you wouldn't get any cash back for it. But if there was just one in the beginning and then zeros followed, even if there was only one zero equaling $10, yet it would still have value and you'd receive cash back. In the same way, Sadhguru Muktanan Swami spun only 50 maras in that age where Santos were doing 500 and 1,000 maras, but his maras were quality over quantity. Because what did Maharaj want? What did great Santos expect? Well, Maharaj wanted not everyone to just spin Swamran, 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 but Maharaj wanted them to remember his divine form. And when one div remembers Bhagwan's divine form, then one forgets everything else. And when one forgets everything else, one becomes happy. Bhagwan's, you can say, true uh, goal and goal for each and every one of his followers is to become happy. But this was only possible if an example was set by Sadhguru Muktanand Swami. Swami constantly remembered Bhagwan's form. But this was just an example for us to show that if you do spin the Mara, you don't have to spend 500 or 1,000 to be accredited by Maharaj or to be acknowledged or to even, uh, you can say, feel satisfied that I have done enough devotion because Bhagwan doesn't look at that graph. Bhagwan looks at the graph where even if you just did one Mara, you remembered his form. And in that manner, Bhagwan says in the Vachnamrut, Gurira, First chapter, 22nd Vajramrut. Singing without remembering God is as good as not singing at all. 
and the number in the name of this Vachnamrut is called the digit one. Just like how it was explained that if a check is written but there is no one before all the zeros, then there is no value. In the same way Bhagwan teaches us in this charitra that if you do any kind of devotion, it should be done with heart and it should be done where one remembers Bhagwan. But not so that if one does five hundred, six hundred or quality quantity, it doesn't matter. To Bhagwan in Bhagwan's perspective, in Bhagwan's eyes. Moving on, another charitra. One time Shriji Maharaj was in the residence of Akshar Ordi, meaning Bhagwan also had, you can say, a small home that was specially dedicated and made for him in the village of Gadara, and they called the home Akshar Ordi. And Muktanan Swami came there for Maharaj's darshan in the morning. All the santos would go and have Maharaj's darshan there, and Sadguru Muktanan Swami again came and went for Maharaj's darshan. Then Swami asked Maharaj, please tell me something that will give me peace of heart, meaning tranquility, peace. Now, first and foremost, we have to understand that Muktan Swami was always at peace at, heart, peace at heart. He always was tranquil. He always felt very calm because he was engrossed in Maharaj's idol. But again, Swami is not asking for himself. Swami is asking for all of the devotees in the future, like ourselves. And Swami asked, please tell me something that will give me peace of heart. Then Maharaj talked about his seven year Vanvitran Leela, meaning when Bhagwan was in milk and verni form from the age of 11 onwards for seven years until 18, he traveled around India and traveled more than 12,000 kilometers barefooted in, you can say, the worst circumstances, environments, climates possible, where it's the most snow or cold to the most heat, all these different various areas. And Maharaj described who he met, where he went, and he just told them his divine charitras then. The divine incidents in and experiences that he went through in the land of India. But after telling Swami all these divine incidences, meaning charitras, Swami did not understand why. Then Muktanan Swami went the next day, meaning he left and then he came again the next day to meet Maharaj. And again he met Maharaj and asked the same question. Maharaj, please tell me something that would give me peace at heart. Maharaj inquired, I had told you yesterday Swami stayed silent, but still did not understand the meaning behind Maharaj's message. On the third day, Swami went for the darshan of Maharaj, and there Maharaj commanded Swami to go on a tour, meaning go on a vitran in Gujarat. Then Maharaj had Swami, then Maharaj had Swami's bullock cart prepared for departure. Then the elite prominent santos went to give farewell to Puja Swami. So what had happened was that on the third day when Muktan Swami came for Maharaj's darshan, all of a sudden, Maharaj said, go. Go on Vichran, go on tour, perform uh, my devotion and have others perform my uh, worship as well. So after going, he did not, Maharaj, or Muktan Swami did not understand because he was the Das of Maharaj. So without any question, he left. Maharaj had Swamis, you can say, in that time, car, in, in that time, or in this time, car, in that time, bullock and cart, ready, uh, prepared. And all the santos, the prominent santos, and all the other santos there residing in Gadara, uh came near and, uh, you know, wished Swami a farewell. That Swami will see you soon. Then Sadguru Nityan Swami asked Swami, Why did Maharaj all of a sudden command you to go on Vitran? Why all of a sudden? What is the reason for this? Swami explained, For the past three days, I was going for the darshan of Maharaj, and there I told Maharaj, Please tell me something, Maharaj, that will give me peace of heart. So Maharaj told, he told me his divine incidences when he was Nilkan Verni, 
for that seven years. Nityan Swami said, Whoa, Swami, Maharaj has this much affection for you? Whenever I asked Maharaj, please tell me your divine incidents, incidences, when you went for Van Return as Nilkanvarni, Maharaj would reply, I left home and then I met Raman and Swami. That's it. Nothing more. So at that time Nityan and Swami was there and he asked Muktan and Swami that why all of a sudden Muktan and Swami said, you know, I, for the past three days I've been going to see Maharaj and all of a sudden the first day I asked Maharaj, please give me or tell me something peace at heart. And he says all of his divine art charitras and explains of his Nilkan Verni Vitran. I did not understand. I did not say anything. But it was just something on my mind. So on the third day, he sends me off without any kind of, you can say, other comment or any kind of message. He sends me off. So that's why. But Nityan Swami said, you're kidding me. I've been asking Maharaj, I've been trying to get him to tell me his divine charitras when he was Nilkan Verni. But he does never, he never tells me anything. And he told you all these charitras. So Swami said, Swami said that this is how much affection Maharaj has, has for you. So Swami became sad and started to head out. Muktan and Swami, he became very sad because he did not realize what Maharaj was doing. Then Nityan and Swami went to Maharaj and asked, You have this much affection for Muktan and Swami? Maharaj then commanded for Swami to return back. Then Swami returned back to Akshara Ordi and composed a kirtan. The kirtan means meaning was that you are my only one only place of peace of heart and everything else is false. Maya. Now after Muktan Swami realized, he became sad. And then Maharaj became sad for sending him away. And then brought him back. Well, what does this show us? What is the message behind this? Well, in the Vachnamrut, Gadda middle chapter, 35th Vachnamrut, Maharaj states, All my actions, incidences, should be narrated, heard, and contemplated in upon the mind. Remember, remember at La remember the charitras at last moment and the jiva will attain the abode of God divine incidents is explained to Swarupa and Swami that he was he was, he was actually uh, up, he, was, he had agonizing pain in his body but when Maharaj told him his charitras all that pain went away so this is the value you can say this is the you can say essence of listening to charitras is to attain a piece of a heart. Now I can say that pausing before reading another charitra, that every day our Puja Santos morning and night deliver charitras of Maharaj. And due to that, due to going on Vichran to many, many different states, Hari Bhaktos tell Santos that by listening to Katha, we receive peace of heart. Yes. Santos do deliver Katha in such a fashion But moreover The main you can say Essence The, the Katha when it's read Bhagwan's Charitras are so So much soothing for the soul That one does not realize Until one has listened We can even say that I remember uh, uh, um, Incident uh, Our Sanjay Bhagat He lives in Macon, Georgia And before he was in a Bhagat at all, he was actually the opposite. He uh, he he was um, how could I describe a gangster? Uh, he did everything. He he did not follow his parents' words. He did everything outside, completely opposite of a Hari Bhagat. Just take it that way. His mother and father would not say anything. But one time, they had uh, his mother or father had obtained a Puja Guruji's katha. Adhyatmik Bhate and it was inside of uh, the CD player in his car and Sanjay Bhagat was uh, he used to work at a store and he was driving this was in New York maybe 10-12 years ago he was driving back from the store back to home and he decided he wanted to listen to the radio so he turned it on he did not know his dad had put that Katha in so he just turned it on and that Katha started of Puja Guruji 
No, all of, he, he did not turn it off right away, but he listened for a good, you can say, 10 minutes. Just in 10 minutes, Pujya Guruji's Katha completely changed Sanjeev Bhagat. So before he used to hang out with his, you can say, gang, his friend circle, he had many, many friends, and they would go out, watch movies, they would go out and, you know, eat outside food and do everything. So his friends had a habit, and he also had a habit, that after he would get off of work, he would uh, call his friends and say, let's meet up here, let's do this, let's do that, plan the night. But after just listening to 10 minutes of Puja Guruji's Katha, that night he did not call any, any of his friends. So the next day, his friends called him and say, why didn't you call us last night? We wanted to do something, so why didn't you call us? There in that time, some kind of change occurred in him when he was listening to the Katha. He told his friends that, I'm sorry, but we will not be able to hang out together anymore. They said, why? What did we, did we do something wrong? I mean, is it our fault? Can we change something? He said, it's not your fault. But for many, many lives, he was repeating what he had heard in Katha that, had, that was absorbed in him, meaning that had changed him. He repeated Puja Guruji's words by saying that many, many lives we've been doing this, yet we have not attained happiness. Every day we've been eating outside food. Every day we've been watching movies and doing everything and anything. Yet nothing has given us peace. But I listened to this katha for just 10 minutes and I attained peace. So I don't want to do this anymore. And he said that to all of his friends, tell everyone not to call me anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. And after that time, just in a short period of maybe one year, he moved from New York to Georgia, Macon, and there Hari Krishna Bhagat was a Hari Bhagat there, and he met Hari Krishna Bhagat, and there he became such a Hari Bhagat that right now he has a Chotli. Not only that, he does the Tilak Chanlo, and all these are basics, a puja, but moreover, he takes off of his work every year in the summer, one month or two months or three months, how much ever santos need when santos come to, for vitran in the United States so he can drive them around. This was all due to 10 minutes of Katha Varta, 10 minutes of listening to the Charitras of Maharaj. And, but the main important aspect is not only that 10 minutes of Charitras, but by whose voice the charitra was, was heard. That was very important because Puja Guruji is an ekantik satpurush. He has constant contact with Bhagwan. So whatever charitras that he is seeing, Bhagwan himself is inside of him speaking those charitras. That's why he had a total effect. That's why he had a total 360 in his life. And now he is the Bhagat who he is just because of 10 minutes of Kathavarta of Puja Guruji. Now, from that, we can think about how great Puja Guruji is. Because of just doing Kathavarta, he can change so many, or even the utmost worst person into the best satsangi. Not only that, but by listening to Kathavarta, his whole family benefited. Right now, his whole family, he has a son, very, very, very talented. Not only that, but he, he's the utmost Hari Bhagat due to his father becoming such a Hari Bhagat. So Kathavarta in the divine incidences of Bhagwan change those who are willing to accept that change and who are willing to accept Bhagwan in their lives. And we can see right now in Christianity or even in other religions that those who preach, the preachers, right, the priest, they preach and they preach about God Whoever, they, whoever their God is, they believe in, and they preach about that God's, you can say, divine incidences, and many, many people. Sure, there's different levels of Bhagwan. The Supreme Bhagwan is Bhagwan Swamran, but those other gods that they, 
their charitas that they listen to, they also develop a change because we have to accept the fact that thousands and not thousands, millions and billions of people are in the Christianity religion and are striving more and more. There has to be some element playing a role. It's not like a bunch of people gather in a big church where a thousand people sit and then they listen to the the you know listen to whatever their scriptures are and then they go off and that's it. No, there must be some kind of element that is changing them. But that's their religion and this is our religion, the Swamnar and Sampradaya. And in the Swamnar and Sampradaya, there be, there has been so many different different haribhaktos. I can even give an example of Asid Bay here. For past ten years I've known him. And he used to go to another temple that we used to stay before. And he used to come every day to Mandir, just like today, right now. But he used to sit with here Swami, or he still does, but he would sit with Swami, Pujaniskam Swami, and listen to his Kathavarta. Anything. He would just sit and listen. Even if Swami said two words or if Swami did Katha for two hours, if only he was there or if there was 15 Haribhaktos with Swami, he would just listen. Now compared to his past that I have heard of until now, the 10-12 years that have changed him, Puja Swami has to tell him to go home at night time. He has not missed even a day without having the Darshan of Maharaj and Santo, unless there was some kind of circumstance of his store or any other incidences, family emergencies, things like that. But he has not missed a single day of Mandir. Now, if we look at that, what is driving him? What is pulling him? What is attracting him to come? Yes, we can definitely say Maharaj, but moreover, we have to say Santo Samagam. And in that sang samagam lies Bhagwan's charitras. And that's why he gets a piece of heart. If we ask him, what is the reason that you're able to come here every day? He says that I receive peace, santi. And due to that, I come, I listen to Bhagwan's charitras via Puja Swami. And due to that, everything else is forgotten at that time. This is the benefit of listening to Bhagwan's charitras and absorb the, uh, absorbing them and taking them into one's heart or into one's life. Now lastly, last charitra that we want to go over is, you know how when Arati Stuti is done during the evening time. Before Arati commences, there's two kirtans that are sung. Santaparam Hitakari Jagatamai Santaparam Hitakari And this kirtan Many people sing it, many devotees sing it, but in reality, what is the real benefit that santos perform? What, what do they do exactly? By, by associating with them, or by even merely having their darshan, what, what is the purpose? What do they do? In this kirtan, Brahman and Swami addresses it, but we would like to understand this one line, Santa Paramahitkari, through a charitra. So at one time, Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami and Sadguru Krupanan Swami, along with 60 saints, went to the village of Juna Savar, meaning it's a village in Gujarat, an old styled village, old fashioned remote village. And Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami and Krupanan Swami went with his Sant Mundo, 60 of them, to that village. The king of the village was Uga Kuman. A person who had hated the Swamnan sect. Those of you, maybe you've uh, seen uh, during winter workshop, uh, during the Saturday culture program, uh, the Bals and Kishores of Loyadam, New Jersey, Mandir performed the same exact play of this Charitra, showing how uh, Santos are beneficial. So this is the exact Charitra, more so in detail. The king of the village was Uga Kuman, a person who had hated the Somran sect. So he found out saints had entered his village. So he sent a small kid, meaning his child, to insult the saints so they would leave the village. So the saints went and sat by the bank of the river on the outskirts of the village. 
There, they met a Brahman who was a satsangi of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So seeing that their gods, you can say, Chanlo was on this devotee, they know that this was a devotee of Bhagwan. They asked for food. And this Brahman, being a satsangi, obviously offered grains to the santos. The santos took their meal and blessed the Brahman. Then Sadguru Gunathya and Swami inquired about the small boy who had insulted them, that if he was the son of Uga Kuman or not. The Brahman replied, how could that son, or how could that sinner have a son? So every time he has a son, he keeps dying at that small age. After listening to this, Swami told all the santos to pray for Uga Kuman that he receive a son and would live a long life and he would be able to stay at Uga Kuman's home. Meaning, at that time, Uga Kuman, the king of the village, he did have sons, but they would keep dying. Just at small age. He had misfortune. He had, you can say, a curse upon him that he must have done something bad in his previous life. So every time he would have a son, he would just die away, die away. So Sadhguru Gunathya and Swami found out about this exact you can, incident that this is the situation, this is the problem. So he asked all the santos to pray for Uga Kuman, that Uga Kuman receives a son and he would not die and he would live a long life and live at the home of Uga Kuman. Then the saints left the village and then after five years they returned. By then Uga Kuman did have a son and he was exactly five years old. Since that time, since the son was born by the blessing of Swami, he was good natured by heart. So the son somehow found out the saints had come to the village again. So he started to plead to his father Uga Kuman to take him to meet the santos. Obviously, at that time, Uga Kuman was not a satsangi, he was a kusangi. So he denied his son, but his son pleaded and cried and cried so much that obviously his father, he was so, his father, he was so dear to, um, you know, his son that he said, yes, let's go. So obviously his son took Uga Kuman to the santos. And what do santos do? First, at, at first sight, Uga Kuman refused, but he said, let's go. And when Uga Kuman came and bowed down to santos, at that time, Sadguru Gunanthi and Swami, his presence, his aura, his divine persona was so affected on, on Uga Kuman that right there and then, he told Swami, he to, after, after his son's plead, Swami told him to become a satsangi. And there, right there, he became a satsangi. Why? Because he found out that his son was born and blessed by Sadguru Gunathya and Swami. The message to learn behind this is that santos will always be in our benefit. No matter how you can say insulting, they say something, no matter har how harsh of a way they say something, or no matter what they do, but a true saint is always, always benefiting and beneficial to everyone and every soul. But it's a matter of one's understanding that one understands and sees this point. But here in this Charitra, Sadguru Gunathya and Swami shows his, showers his grace upon Uga Kuman and he becomes a satsangi. In this way, Bhagwan and his sadhus charitras always give peace of heart. Even just by merely reading the charitras, one can gain some kind of principle. So in one's free time, after school, after even everyone one's work is done, one should at least open up a book of charitra. There's many, many books, Hari Charitra Amrut Sagar, or even uh, Aksharan Swami's Vato, and if one cannot read Gujarati, one should tell one's parent to read them a, a, a charitra and explain it to them. Due to that, one would attain peace of heart. And whatever, you can say, misery or whatever sadness that or depression that one has experienced in that day would be completely zeroed out. So this is the divine forms of Bhagwan's charitras that we will continue next week. 
a small message that UTSEVIR 2017's registration form is now officially uploaded on our website, theswaminarayan.org. Uh, please make sure to register. It's in Tampa, Florida, for those who uh, can attend. From uh, those who want to attend from New Jersey, there will be a transportation provided, obviously with a fee. Uh, for nearby states such as Pennsylvania, New York, et cetera, so on and so forth. So make sure to come and attend Yud Sibir. Uh, Puja Guruji will be present there. And July 9th is Guru Purnima. So uh, you'd be able to uh, perform the Puja of Puja Guruji, uh, which is the holiest you can s day for uh, the Puja of uh, you know one's Guru, one's spiritual master. And you can uh, attain Puja Guruji's blessings on that day as well. So saying that, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.